Okay. All right. I think we're live. All right. Here we go. Okay. Well, welcome everybody to BeatStars Academy, the live stream. I am your host, Ogden, and we have a very special guest joining us um, in Ellipsy. I'm going to let you introduce yourself in a minute, but but what I kind of want to do is, is set the stage really quickly just kind of for this, this stream in this session, right? So us at BeatStars, our number one mission is to make sure that we are empowering creators around the world to become successful entrepreneurs. And one of the ways that we do that is really kind of keeping our ear to the metaphorical streets, if you will, and really just understanding, okay, what is our community going through? What are you guys going through on a day-to-day -day basis? And how can we help you guys along your journey? And so with that, what we really wanted to do was host a Black Friday, but also like overall year-round pricing strategy session to really kind of help you guys who are just trying to figure out, okay, where do I properly place myself kind of in this, this market today? So I don't think there's anybody better to be talking about this subject than Ellipsy. Uh, you are a producer and a BeatStars team member. So please feel free to take the stage. Please introduce yourself. Let us know a little bit about you. Uh, and then we'll, we'll take it off from there. Well, I feel like you said everything I was going to say. So, um, you know, I... I'm a producer. I've been making music and making a living off of my creative entrepreneurship for the last four years, I think, um, prior to getting hired at BeatStars. And now I'm teaching people how to do that exact same thing that I achieved um, on the other side. So it's a pleasure to be able to play a part in other people's success. And I'm excited to kind of share some ideas and some strategies that I've picked up along the way. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. All right. Perfect. So, so let's dive in because um, I'm, I'm curious in the first question that I kind of want to kick to you is I want to start at the very beginning, right? In my journey, I have this great beat, have this, you know, it's, I think it sounds great. I'm ready to sell it. Where do I even go first to get an idea of like what to sell it for, what the value is, where the market is kind of standing for even the, you know, what it is that I'm, I'm putting out into the market. Like, where do I really kind of start to get an idea of what the value is for what I'm creating? That's a really good question. Um, well, the best place to gain information about the market is on a marketplace that has your buyers on it. So um, obviously there's a lot of different platforms out there, a lot of different social media uh, groups and things like that. Um, I'm not partial to BeatStars just because I work here. Um, but I think that the uh, BeatStars marketplace has a lot of um, opportunities for you to get information like that um do like the top charts and things like that um there's obviously other ways to do it but you know you can't uh, i think one of the biggest things that people struggle with is they come onto the, ch the charts and they see all these different things and they don't know where to put themselves or where they fall so they end up copying what they're seeing instead of you know taking a step back and um like really putting some thought into where or how or whatever their strategy is going to be, they just kind of throw things out there and they're like, it's not working. Um, selling beats, if you want to be successful, you have to treat it like a business. So um, this is something that like challenging you to restructure the way that you're thinking about this. It's more than just, you know, creating great music and having a cool tag. It's you've got to think about it as I'm moving a digital product. Um, and that's going to come with, you know, some strategies. So the best Best place to go for that information is going to be in, inside of marketplaces, inside of um, groups where artists and your whatever your target, if you're selling, you know, loops or whatever, it's going to be other producers. But go to those places and I figure out what the market is currently valuing um, similar products at. Um, a lot of times we feel like we want to tell people what we're worth or what the beat is worth or what the track is worth. But um, that's not how it works. The market will tell you. So um, it's a lot of listening and uh, making strategic moves after listening. How do I how do I know what the what my customers are telling me about my price point? If I'm selling something a whole bunch of times, is my price point just right or is it too cheap? Right. Or if I'm not selling enough, is it just my marketing isn't right or my prices are too high? Like, how do you how do you really kind of differentiate between that? OK, Um I'm going to go in a completely other direction than where I was before, but, um, or maybe it's not. Basically, <laughs> we'll you're going to start we'll by just going onto the marketplace and identifying the people that are around you inside of whatever you're, if you make boom bap or if you make drill or 
whatever it is that your primary focus is, go inside of the top charts, go inside and, and take a look at those tags and identify other people, other producers that are making the same or very similar types of music as you and look at their strategies, look at their pricing. And the goal of that is not to copy them and, you know, or, or undercut them. It's to figure out what they're doing and try to use your own intuitive entrepreneurial mindset to like figure out like what is what does it feel like when I'm shopping on this person's site put yourself in the perspective of the buyer that's the first step you need to if you want to market well or sell well you need to understand who you're selling to so you don't have any customers if you're just starting out you can leverage insights from other people who do have established presences and position yourself strategically alongside them so that you're not attempting to compete with them by being better or you know cutting underneath them or stealing their their you know whatever's you're putting yourself in the gap um I want to start talking about all the technical terms that's the gap analysis but that's where that's where you start um so you can there's three different ways you can go above them in price. You can go slightly under them in price, or you can be right in the middle. I would suggest stick, sticking in the middle. Um, and then you got to just give it time. If you are, if you upload a beat and it's $29.99 and you make 10 sales and then you experiment with some pricing, you increase it a little bit and the data stays the same, you should feel empowered to keep your price high. The market is telling you we will still pay for it like that. But if the opposite happens where, you know, you put it up for $39.99 and your sales completely plummet and there, there's nothing, no matter what you do, no matter what type of promotion you do, like you're still not getting any sales. The market is telling you they want you to drop your price. So you got to you got to listen. It's, it's not going to be like this one size fits all. It's going to depend on a lot of different things, but you have to be willing to experiment and you have to be willing to get it wrong. You know what? OK, that's that's actually really, really interesting because, you know, you know what one of the things that we I think just kind of within beat stars, but then you just kind of look around too. everybody's pricing strategy is a little bit different. Right. It's, it's very hard to pinpoint. This is what you should do. And this is what's going to work specifically. Now, whenever we kind of talk about obviously like beat stars and top charts and like kind of everybody that's that's on there, I think there's there's room to. Demystify maybe a little bit of what 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 people may think is going to be the thing that gets you on the top charts or, hey, here's the hack that I found to get on top charts and sell more. I would love to kind of dive into that a little bit more, because I think that's something that we could shed a little bit of light on as far as, you know, the the top charts on, on BeatStars and really how to be thinking about utilizing that. Um, I could go on for days, but I guess uh, I guess the best way to approach this is. I would focus less on trying to get on the top charts and more on establishing a foundation that will lead you there because there's no hack. There's no secret code. You, you know, unless you're trying to, I don't know, bought your stuff or like, I don't know, unless you got some secret, like, you know, magical code, there's, there's no way to just put yourself there. And the people who are there, they, they got there for a reason. So Try not to look at that as like the goal. The goal here is not to necessarily be charting on the on the top charts. It's to solidify yourself inside of the marketplace and to build up something sustainable for yourself. Um, obviously, there's a lot of exposure that comes with being on those charts, but that's being on those charts doesn't necessarily like me or if you're not on those charts doesn't mean you're not going to make any sales there's all types of other ways to leverage social media followings and leverage different you know there's a there's so many other ways that will lead you there when you get it right rather than focusing on like why is that person there do you know what i mean yeah, um yeah 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 i would use the charts as information and and motivation to stand out and be something different um i would never look at that and be like i need to copy that exact strategy because you can see for yourself when if you've got a bunch of fire emojis and it's everyone's doing the same thing. Like, how do you stand out when if you're going to copy that same exact positioning? That's a really good indication that there's room for you to be yourself. I would really advise people to stop right there and think like, what do I feel when I'm looking at this as a buyer? Do I feel like I want to click on this beat? What, what is drawing my attention? And like, start to take note of those things. You can get a lot of information about 
you know, how to position things correctly just by how you feel when you look at it. When an ad comes up, how do you feel? When you see all these emojis, how do you feel? What do you feel like clicking on? And start to just take note of those things and incorporate that into your own strategies. So, okay, a, a couple of things there that I wanna I wanna dive in on because let's let's shift gears a little bit, not too much, but how do I how do I balance pricing, whether it's you know exclusives, non-exclusives, like whatever it is, right? How do I balance my pricing? for loyal customers or return customers um, so that I can actually build long-term relationships. Because I think you and I both know like the best way to, to sustain a business is not just one-time sales. It's making sure that your customers are coming to you over and over. It's that retention. So how do I use a pricing strategy to actually build and retain a customer base, if that makes sense? Um. Yeah, it does. Uh, the first thing is going to be not targeting people who are looking for a quick transaction. It's got to be deeper than that. Um, that's obviously one layer. There's lots of different buyer types on every platform. But if you're looking for sustainable success and a loyal like audience of people and people who keep on coming back, you need to give them a reason to. Um, and the best way to do that is to leverage your unique skill set and the things that make you you. To think about the strengths that you have and create value packed offers that are not based on just undercutting the market or trying to, you know, pack 100 beats into a 50 cent deal. Like that's not you might temporarily get a boost in sales, but building a strategy up that's based solely on these deep discounts is ultimately going to set you back because people are going to expect that from you all the time. And you're going to struggle to pivot to you know, offering different premiums. They're going to be like, well, you just charged 99 cents last week. Why are you charging me, you know, a normal price now? So I would highly advise people don't default to that because it, um, it takes away, it takes away not just from your own efforts, but from the efforts of everyone kind of around you. Um, but that being said, I think, um, you can learn a lot from these people. Uh, and you just just take a look like, you know, some of these people are offering like 10 beats, but they've got, you know, catalogs of just thousands and thousands and thousands. And that's a good like value to the people who are supporting that particular producer. I would say, I mean, think about what other types of things that you have, like, do you mix and master? Do Are you good with graphic de design? Like, do you have a social media following? What other types of skills that do you have? Think about those, write them all down, and then do the opposite. Think about yourself as the buyer. What are artists looking for? What are their, what are the things that they're struggling to achieve? Like, how can we like meet their needs all in one? It's not going to be just about giving them more and more and more beats. It's going to be about creating something that they find uh, worth their investment. So we have to make it worthwhile. And I think um, a lot of people get stuck trying to make sales instead of building connections. Um, so I would say for like optimizing that, you I mean, you can you can like I mean, I, I don't know. You could I could go on for I could just go on forever. But like fostering the connection after the sale is going to be a huge, huge, huge thing. Um, but getting that first sale is also going to be a huge thing. You're going to have to like do some work. It's going to take work. The marketplace is not going to sell it for you. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I, I got for that particular thing. It's going to take you experimenting with different things. And once you find that optimal spot, then you can retain customers by treating them right and making them feel seen and making it more than just one sale. It's something that they're you're working on together. Yeah. You know, so... I want to take a, a step back and then I want to get into kind of a little bit more granularity for like Black Friday seasonal deals and stuff like that. But before we get there, I think we all know we're living in a time where inflation is rampant, right? Like inflation is happening. Things cost more. Um, cost of living is up. Because of that, I may need to start selling my beats at a higher price point. But my customer base is used to what I'm offering right now. What is kind of some of the advice that you give to someone who knows that they need to raise their prices? It's just it's an absolute must, but they don't want to alienate or, you know, disassociate with a particular customer base that they already have. How should they approach 
raising their prices if they absolutely have to? Um, creating tiered packages, essentially. Um, utilizing the licensing, um, like the customizable licensing offerings to make packages that appeal to those different audiences. Um, you know, there's, you can still keep a, an affordable like point of entry for those people who are not able to afford, you know, a higher one, or maybe it's not in their budget, whatever. You can still cater to them while offering a more value packed offer and your next tier and then one above that. And you can, like I said before, like you can put things in there, like if you're mixing and mastering or putting songwriting prompts or different things like that, that you can incorporate. You could even incorporate the bundling strategy into those other types of tiers. Um, but it's going to be about like creating different access points and changing the terms and making those appeal to whoever your audience is for that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. You know, what's interesting too, right. Is actually, so if we're talking about, um, we're talking about different access points. One thing that I think is often maybe overlooked and potentially under, undervalued are free downloads as well. Right. Like just, putting the free downloads up and we have actually it's interesting because we actually just launched uh kind of our new iteration of of Veloco the the partnership with Veloco and if you have your beats up for free in BeatStars they're going to automatically be um in Veloco which for those who don't know Veloco is a basically a mobile DAW for artists so they can record essentially on their phone on a mobile app and those artists who want to record um, they can do that to beats that are in um, that are in Veloco and they're through BeatStars. But all of those beats are free downloads. Um, I would love to know, you know, because we are now giving some good extra access points for those who offer free downloads. What other strategies could you use kind of the, the free download method with in order to expand your customer base and ultimately expand sales too? <sighs> Well, there's the the obvious email marketing side. Um, the, uh, every time that somebody downloads you, you're creating a lead. You're creating an opportunity for you to foster a connection. I think a lot of people lose sales or lose their opportunity to to scale because they don't take advantage of the the data that's coming their way. Um, I think one of the most important things when it comes to thinking like a business is realizing that data is your best friend. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so you have to kind of switch your thinking and you need to think less about your beats and more about the deets. You got to get the details in and start to like touch base with these people. Like there should be more than just, oh, thanks for buying my beat on BeatStars and you never hear from them again. Like they, people, people keep shopping with people that they trust or companies that they trust um, and making people feel seen and supported and being there whether it's live, like, you know, you're, you have a small audience and you're able to send them a personal email right away, or you've got a drip campaign, or you've got whatever it is, you've got resources for them, whatever it is that you can do, or maybe you engage with them on social media, anything that you can do to tell them, hey, I see you, thank you, and I'm here to support you in a real way, more than just my words, um, is going to, it's going to enhance that connection. And every time you you, you know, see that person making like offering things like a loyalty program, like offering um, some of those big bundles and those discounts only to people who are have shopped with you before, things like that. Like there's a lot of different ways that you can leverage that data and make those people or give them an incentive to shop with you and to see the value in shopping with you. I love that. I love that. Um, and I think also kind of what you were saying, too, right, like utilizing that free download as a way to for that exchange of some sort of information coming back to you, right? Whether it's like a follow or just getting that contact info, because if you have a direct way to get in contact with a customer, probably your sales are likely going to go up. So yeah, I think that's a, that's a really great point there. Um, one thing, so I want to switch a little bit more to the Black Friday stuff um, and or more kind of like the seasonality sales. And uh, just for everybody who's tuning in, we are about to roll out our kind of own Black Friday campaign, but for our producers, essentially, to, to really help you guys sell, sell more. So um, at some point, very soon in the near future, we're going to have a code. Uh, I think it's going to be Black Friday 2024. And if you use that coupon code, then your beats are actually going to show up in a very specific section of marketplace where buyers are going to be able to easily find beats that are on 
Black Friday sale. So that's coming. Um, and I think that's going to be actually something really, really beneficial for um, a lot of our producers to utilize. Lisi, I'm curious, in addition to that, when we talk about Black Friday, when we talk about seasonality sales, um, some of great approaches that you've seen or maybe some great approaches that um, you've seen other people do or maybe that you've done yourself would love to kind of uh, dive into. Yeah, just how people could kind of just get prepared for Black Friday coming up. Yeah, um, you can I mean, you can really take any approach you want. You can use your data and kind of double down with, um, you know, promoting or, or advertising um, bulk deals on tracks that have already done well. You can um, do the opposite and take tracks that maybe have no motion and put them into um, like an album or something like that and use that and say like for a limited time, like just for a, a short time, like these are all heavily discounted if you're trying to move things out of your catalog. Um, you could experiment with pricing during that time. Um, especially if you have older beats that you're not maybe attached to and you don't have any like problem with selling them, you could make your exclusives really affordable, different strategies like that. It really depends on what, how many beats you've got, what your, what your goals are, what your strategy is. But yeah, um, I, I personally love the idea of using that time to make like a specific pack that's filled with either like, um, your best selling beats of the year, or maybe it's a, uh, you know, if you make holiday beats, like anything like that, that you can step outside and like do something different, those things are going to stand out. Everyone's got discounts all the time. So making it just a discount isn't going to necessarily like make you stand out. Um, I feel like actually, well, I, I won't get into that. Um, but adding different things, like even if so, I, some of the people I work with, they, they're, they're excellent songwriters, putting that inside of a, a pack and just saying like, this is a holiday pack. It's exclusive during this time. You get a songwriting prompts and mixing and mastering and a live vocal or a you know coaching session or you know alterations on the track, customizations. Maybe you get a, a sped up version and a and a and a reverb version. Like making these different packs, like thinking about outside outside of the sale. Where are the people going to go next? What's their next step? If you can give them resources and give them value for their next step, they're going to come back to you because you're making the process easier for them. So I feel so, like there's a lot of room there. So that that strategy, because I think that's that's brilliant, right? Can that strategy then be taken and duplicated even outside of seasonal campaigns? I mean, do you think that that could be a year round thing or, or would you suggest that that's just for seasonal black friday christmas you know just kind of holiday type of stuff um it uh, uh, uh there's no right or wrong answer you know um you can use those types of packs i think that that's a really smart strategy that i wish i was doing right now um but i would not um you just understand that by taking that like obviously you're gonna you're gonna you know have whatever data spike because of these different you know optimi uh, you know people like what you're offering. But if you extend the sale past when you said you were going to, you are training people not to trust you, really. If you say, hey, it's limited time and it's been limited time for the last two years, you're taking away from the impact of your sale. So I would um, advise people to kind of think about that. If you would like to have packs and services combined within you know different tiers, um, like that can certainly be a strategy, but that would be not your Black Friday sale. That would be your primary strategy. Um, and you can pair the two, but like you have to, you have to choose one. If you're going to make your offering really value packed for a limited time and then take it away, you know, you can do that and you can you position that around, you know, could do it every year. You could do it every quarter. You could do it however frequently you want. As long as you're communicating that to the people that are shopping with you, they're going to be waiting for it. Um, there is a little downside to that because if you are, if people know at the end of the month, she always runs a sale, most likely your customers are going to wait until the end of the month to buy when mm -hmm. your prices are lowest. So you just kind of have to balance the two. You don't want to be too, you don't want to be always running a deal. You don't want to always be offering the same thing because then you take away from the impact of what you're offering. So, yeah. 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 No, I love that. I love that. And, you know, guys, we're going to um, if you guys have questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. We want to make sure that we we get to them. We'll probably keep this going for another uh, five, five, seven minutes just to to make sure that we're respectful of, of everybody's time. Um, Lisi, I'm curious. 
for you, when you look kind of back on your career a little bit, some of the mistakes that you remember making that were pivotal from a pricing standpoint, um, but that you wouldn't advise somebody else to do right moving forward. Can you think of some of those? And if you can, what are they and what were those mistakes and, and why did you make those and why would you never make those again? Uh, yeah. Well, um, <laughs> one of them is I was, um, I didn't, I didn't value my data until I had so much that it was overwhelming. And I so wish that I knew then what I know now, because um, I would have implemented, <laughs> there's so many tools out there now, like I would have implemented a system to support me, but um, I wasn't thinking like that when I first started. And that's why I'm a huge advocate for people learning the value of their data so that they can start to know, oh, I, all I, I ran a BeatStars campaign and all I got was data. It's like, yeah, that's great. Like, that's what you want to have. So I, um, that would be the first thing is I had a, I had the wrong idea of what was the most value to me when I was starting. And, um, the next would be, I did way too much on my own and I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, that led to me not being consistent. And, uh, the third would be that I, uh, I conducted way too much business through my DMS and on my social mm -hmm. platforms. And that led to me being disorganized and I ended up losing out on um, certain sales or certain opportunities because I had them all over the place. I need, I should have funneled them into one place much sooner. Um, and that's what I ended up using BeatStars for in the beginning was just one place, one central place to funnel people to so that I could, you know, keep track of what was happening because I, somebody would be like, oh, you know, I want to, I want to work with you. And I'd be like, yeah, I'll get you that. And then it wouldn't happen. So, you know, kind of putting myself in a position where I already had that that be uploaded before I started promoting it on socials or, you know, kind of just being more organized would be the be the, the biggest thing and not valuing my data. I hear you. I hear you. OK, I love that. I love that. I want to get to um, a couple of just kind of audience questions. Um, we have one from Profit Money Beats. Um, this is a good one. What is a good number of beats for a bundle and what is a good price point? I realize that it's dependent on the producer, but maybe just generically. Um, I don't have the I don't have the, the perfect answer for that. That's going to take a little bit of market research. You're going to have to go and look at your boom bat people and you're going to have to see what is that being valued at right now and what offers are currently there, because, you know, if inside of that um, inside of that niche, if everyone is offering their beats for $29.99 and it's buy one, get one free, you can do three or four. And that would be valuable inside of that particular niche. Every single tag is going to have its own audience. So that one's going to take a little bit of market research. Um, you can book a yeah. call with me and I can help yeah. you with that. Perfect. Perfect. Um, Cloud9, what's up, man? Um, he has a great question. What would be some good run dates to start a BeatStars promo campaign for Black Friday? What I will say on to that, I believe the Black Friday campaign that we have, um, I want to believe, I believe it starts, it's the end of, I think it's a couple of days before Black Friday and then it runs to December 2nd. Um, what I have also seen though, is that kind of a little bit earlier, the better, at least not to, to steal your thunder here. But, um, you know, I think running it maybe even mid-November probably wouldn't hurt. But Lisi, I'm, I'm curious to, to kind of know your your feedback here. Um, yeah, I guess it depends. Uh, are you going to be offering like um, like an exclusive deal that's only available during Black Friday? Because, I mean, the closer to Black Friday, the better then. Um, but if you're just going to be running like normal campaigns or if it's going to be something that you've done before, it's not a huge change from what your normal strategy is. There's there's no time like the present. You know, go ahead and get as much data as you can. Um, you know, I, I don't think that there's any real like um, set in stone answer for that one. Um, but it get, again, like if you're going to be offering something that's exclusive only for Black Friday, you want to kind of release it at the same time or around the same time that we're doing our efforts. Um, but again, you have, especially you, Cloud9, you've got your own audience, you've got your own data, like you're going to take a look at what did people do last year? How did that go for you? And then use that data to kind of formulate your plan for this year. The data is yeah, going to yeah. tell you better than me. Yeah. 
And you know, uh, Cloud9 too, for those who are our studio users, um, if you are using studio or, or have already kind of migrated or started migrating to studio, um, you should start to see a banner, I believe November 20th, um, pop up in studio for the Black Friday 2024 campaign that I was mentioning a little bit earlier that BeatStars is doing. I believe in Marketplace, it should be on the 27th. Both of those are still gonna run until December 2nd. So just keep that in the back of your mind. One piece of data that we've also seen as well is just from um, if you're looking at trying to figure out what is the perfect discount range to give, like, okay, should I be giving like 10% off during Black Friday or should I be going all the way up to like 90% off? What we have seen in last year's um, kind of top sellers usually they were around 40 to 70 percent off that was about the range that we saw as far as the amount of a discount to give so just kind of keep that in the back of your mind as well whenever you're thinking about running these campaigns anywhere between 40 and 70 percent is about the norm there um so okay this is this is great i think we're at we're a little bit past time i wanted to keep this at 30 minutes. And I know, you know, Lisa, you got some other stuff that you got to do on a, on a call and stuff. But, um, you know, I would love to know just a piece of advice that you would like to maybe just kind of leave with us or even just kind of leave with the community that we could even follow until the rest of the year, right? From a pricing strategy or even just a gener generic kind of a piece of advice. What do you, what do you kind of leave our, our audience with? Um. Take the time to figure out what you want to do, okay, that aligns with who you are and understand that people are going to forget about you the moment they leave the marketplace unless you give them a reason to. The more intentional you are with making people feel seen afterwards and making that connection go past the transaction, the more likely they're going to come back. This is about building relationships. And if you don't, if you don't get that, you'll end up struggling like I did. It's important to not just look at your numbers, but realize those numbers are they're indications of people reaching out to you. Reach back, reach back and figure out what you can do to meet the needs of the people who are shopping with you. Instead of resisting, you know, people who are wanting to pay $7.99, look at that and say, okay, most of my people want to pay this much. What does that tell me about what they need and how can I better meet their needs? That step right there is going to set you apart. When you take the steps to figure out those, those numbers mean that these are people, real people with real needs. And I have the opportunity to meet them out of everyone on the marketplace. They chose me. So do it well and they'll come back. I love it. I love it. Ellipsy. Thank you so much. I, yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for everybody who uh, was tuning in. We're going to have some more Black Friday kind of sales pricing strategy content dropping very soon. Um, so stay stay tuned for that. Uh, and then we'll come back. We'll do another one of these. This was this was really fun. So I really, really hope you enjoyed it. Um, but for everybody else, thank you guys so much. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Bye. Cool. Bye, guys.